when you hear about service, service design, you hear about things like cross-functional, transdisciplinary, holistic, integrative, systemic. Uh, these are all words that we hear when we hear people talk about uh, service design. Uh, there are organizational and team and individual scales of activity and service designers need to be effective advocates, facilitators, and even educators um, to help um, the, the people they work um, around, the people they have to influence, understand um, the power of service design. And our uh, participants and members work in a broad range of context. Uh, one of these uh, uh, insights that we uh, we looked at uh, was that there there is uh, a broad range of projects that are being taken on. I'm sorry, um, Eric, back to that first slide. I wanted to cover that second bullet. There we go. Um, beyond execution methods and uh, uh, individual practices or tools, um, there is this 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 concept of uh, the framework or practice of service design. Um, so not just implementing or or introducing individual tools and methods, but introducing an, an entire framework and practice to organizations. So from very discrete, uh, short time frame changes to a longer term, even multi-year uh, design practice changes that our people are engaged in. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Eric, for, for rewinding. Uh, you have already heard that so often our participants and members are pioneers in their organizations in the field of service design. And I hope that you also have taken away from what you've already heard that um, there is this wrestling with what's fixed and what's flexible and vague in the field um, and how people are young in the field and growing in the field. Um, while they're pioneers, they're also being asked to be advocates and uh, instigators and educators about service design in their organization. That's a tall order, and yet um, that's the position we, we see many of our um, survey participants, and we imagine and extend from that also, our broader membership placed in. There is uh, a recognition that um, there's a lack of buy-in in the C-suite. Um, that senior managers aren't, aren't familiar with uh, service design concepts so often. And also, uh, our, our members and uh, participants are so often finding themselves in, in very um, diverse um, design legacy environments. So um, these organizations have different competencies in other disciplines in design, or perhaps real design deficits in their organizations, where they're being asked to make change. And this is a factor that influences how they are thinking about um, creating change and initiating projects in their environments. Uh, this, uh, the individuals that are part of our community uh, are engaged in this broad range of projects. Even in my own interviewing process, I heard uh, one of our subjects, you know, he's he's working on a platform, a platforming process and framework for the entire global organization, and he's working beside uh, the CEO on this effort. And then we have others that were working on smaller projects. Uh, the scope of change really varies dramatically, and so the the, the methods of creating change or 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 initiating and instigating service design in organizations, it it needs seems to need to scale. Um, to meet a broad range of a member needs. The next slide, please. I'm just looking at the time real quick. Some of the evidence we collected, uh, and there were so many great quotes, it's hard to pick out just a few. Uh, again and again, and you may have seen this in the threads you've been involved in within the Slack. People asking for, what's your best ev ev evidence? What's your best use case? How are you making the business case? Uh, what about research? How many times do we see these threads coming up in, in the Slack? And I know each of us in our own work lives are trying to develop these, these files you know, that we can touch quickly and get in front of the right audience to help them understand what we're doing and why we're excited about it and why we believe in service design. Um, the the idea that service design is useful uh, for you know 
uh, individual teams, departments, organizations, and then entire ecosystems uh, presents a, a great challenge because, you know, where does the practitioner um, that wants to grow from a small work scope within his team to a broader departmental or an enterprise awareness perhaps and perhaps competency in service design, how do they, you know, get on that ladder and start that work um, while they're doing the work they need to do on a daily basis? Um, the uh, final comment around this, uh, the evidence is just buzzwords and um, you know, do we know what we mean by the words that we use and are we using words that other people can make sense of? Um, that need to not be trendy or, or try to follow heat but to stay in what's substantive in the field um, and, and also as we talked about earlier, admit uh, where there's uh, a growing edge in the field or in the practice. Next slide, thanks. The, uh, I'm going to jam through these so we have plenty of time for our uh, our breakouts. Uh, C-suite communication we already talked about, and let's just say that it's not just about the C-suite. We have department heads. We're cross-functional, so we need to be able to speak to other departments about and other, even other designers about what we're doing. Um, there are folks that believe there's a design mindset that's missing in the organization. Again, design legacies. What, what is the history of design in our firms and how does that affect our approach? Um, this was so um, such a reflective comment, this idea of stepping up to the next level of design. Um, so often we heard there's hunger for uh, a broader approach to design that service design seems to be filling for many of our, our, our community members. And uh, cross-functional work, next slide, we already covered that, cross-functional work and change management. So those are uh, further implications. Um, so further evidence, now let's go to the implications. Um, so yes, uh, how might we uh, work together to make better uh, business impact cases, economic cases for service design? while not neglecting the other outcome dimensions um, that are so important to what um, service design projects and, and, and methods yield for organizations. Uh, how, do we, how might we help members evangelize more effectively in the different contexts and different scopes and different levels um, and dimensions of their work? Um, and again, whether it's uh, uh, the small scale adopting a method, uh, doing a blueprint, doing a journey map, or building a practice, um, how do we help individual members understand what, what change process they're part of? Um, finally, just the overall knowledge management piece, how do we keep sharing knowledge um, so that we can be better advocates, uh, better change maker, and, and better instigators in the field? 